burn down Babylon. Burn down Babylon. Okay. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube, so I'll start now. I am doing this live. <clears throat> Long day building above ground pools with uh, Mike Peters yesterday up in Homosassa 1526 I've just noticed in Florida I should have noticed this a long time in the in the spring I guess it's not even spring yet it's March early um, you have uh, days where it's Sun all day long uh, Lake Colorado um, just all day long sun all day long <laughs> So you're outside building a pool for, we did a 12 hour day yesterday and just, you just, uh, you know, you get red and cooked and it, uh, you know, it just, it really, uh, cooks you. It, it, uh, tests your resolve and, uh, it, it makes you mentally weak because you start getting angry and bitter and hot. You know, when you get hot and irritable and all that. I definitely do um, and then what happens later on so it's relatively not that hot but in this uh, the summer it's actually hotter and more humid out but the upside to it is that um, you don't have as much sunlight you get shade you get rains so it's actually a blessing you know working in the swamp in the the late summer is terrible except that you get a lot of cloud cover and rain and the rain cools you off to some degree so while going through this all of I, I started to do a, I did an open mic comedy and then uh, Toastmasters I did the same thing it's called Dr. Doobie uh, three reasons to wake and bake a spoken word and in <clears throat> in focusing on the topic of comedy um, I've come, or Yah has revealed to me, I should say, is how, hey, J Joseph, Aquaviva, uh, I would like for you to come out, I'm inviting you, on uh, March the 25th in Sarasota, uh, March the 25th in Sarasota, uh, Jim is going to come, I'm going to do an open mic of Dr. Doobie again, um, because I, I got the video from the live from Side Splitters, and I, I missed whole big chunks of it. And my goal really isn't to, you know, just promote marijuana. It's to promote the good news, which is Jubilee, which is Jesus, when he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. Preach the good news to the poor. This was at the beginning of his ministry before anybody knew that, that he was going to be sacrificed that Passover a few years later. Um, so this is in Luke 4, uh, 18 and 19. What Jesus was saying in the synagogues was when he was reading from the Old Testament. And Yah's law, Yah's law is the good news because it requires debt cancellation. It requires the end of to the reign of the money lenders. It requires the end to the rat race. It requires uh, tribal, self-sufficient, family living, more like the Amish and the American Indians. Um, you know, like um, every day I go to up and you know, I build pools, not every day. Um, but when I work, I go to work for strangers. We worked up in Homosassa, it's an hour away. And if I do my job, I will never meet those people again. This is a completely unnatural economic motivation. It's only motivated by money. Money is the god of Babylon. So how do you... People recognize that. Some will talk about it. But how do you beat that? How do you end that? And the only way to do it is through a grassroots initiative. And that's what Jesus was leading, is a grassroots, nonviolent uh, a debt cancellation uh, rebellion, which is a, basically the same thing that Moses did, right? Before you're rendering entirely for uh, Pharaoh, 
you're working and toiling and laboring for this machine, this empire with the, the, the chariots, right? The strongest empire in the world at the time, whatever, right? And the burden is very heavy, right? The harder we work, the bigger the pyramids get, get the, the bigger the presidential library gets, the bigger the Tower of Babel gets. We work harder. The whole thing is built upon the labor, faith, and belief and the confidence of the debt slaves. And as soon as the debt slaves have a, a viable alternative option to that, quickly, rapidly, the whole thing falls down. The whole thing is a confidence game. And currently, there's very, very, very little confidence in Yah's kingdom, Yah's earthly kingdom. Um, there's lots of complaining and whining and moaning about Babylon's kingdom, the whore's kingdom. It's a system of whoredom. We're all whoring ourselves and doing things uh, that we prefer doing other things. Right? I'm going to build a pool. We're all guilty. I want to hang out with my kids. Uh, it's like the, today is way cooler. It's cloudier today and it's cooled off a bit, uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, well, well, Jesus was willing to walk around and talk to everybody. And what he was doing was giving the inside addition, the insider knowledge of basically what the elders were doing in Exodus, right? So think of the New Testament as a prequel, right? You know how in the Star Wars movies they have uh, prequels? they change the time on you, right? Well, what cannabis is to be used as a tool for so that you can hop around in different time periods and change your perspective. And comedy is all about perspective because if you look at the same event, one can view it as a tragedy and another can view it as an, a comedy, right? <laughs> you know, my friends and I would always do like kind of extreme sports. <laughs> and and we would go down like rocky trails and like skiing, <laughs> skiing. <laughs> so you'd always see guys wiping out mountain biking and skiing. And uh, we, we, a friend of mine and I, we went out uh, in a small craft advisory on a, a catamaran <laughs> and we sunk it. And we had to swim to shore at night, like in a current, like it was like scary. <laughs> it was a tragedy at the time. But uh, comedy, all, all comedy is, is tragedy plus time. So the Bible is the history of a, a, a tragedy, but also a comedy, because it has a happy ending. So my initiative is, my suggestion, and I, it's Yah's suggestion, that the way we initiate this grassroots thing is we have to make it palatable. We have to have a better story for the future of our children. So if we just share that better story for our uh, uh, fellow debt slaves who are at comedy clubs, if we just share that better story at comedy clubs, we burn down Babylon just like that. Where, and a good way to present that, Yah has been explaining to me, is that you walk into a room and no matter how many people are there, you know, the numbers even being small don't matter. It could be 10 people, typically at my Toastmasters, which you guys can all join. And by the way, I'm saying all of us should do this. This is how you do it. This is how you take the whole thing down. Um, so go with the big view, go with the, the, the 30,000 foot view, 50,000, whatever, right? You're looking down like, yeah. And Yah's going, yeah, of course you can beat them because if, you become the bride, if you become the bride, I'll protect you. There's nothing that uh, Pharaoh's chariots can do to you, right? And my personal example of that, meaning what Yah has blessed me, is number one, saving me from, zil you know, the bear and the paw of the bear and the lion many times, including right now because, hello, IRS, I don't pay income taxes. I don't file. Come get me if you think you can, because I think if you operate under Yah's anointing, Yah protects his anointing, and there's nothing you can do. He, 
Yah can open the doors of the jail. Yah can give you an audience with Pharaoh and Pharaoh can't kill you. There's nothing that Pharaoh's chariots can do to kill you. There's nothing that Pharaoh's, uh, anything can, can do to kill you. So, um, so that's the high view. And then, so, okay, there's nothing, but what, what can you do to upset the whole system? Well, if you just ex ex share that good news of Jubilee, of a usury-free society with all, where all the producers issue the money, the producers issue the money instead of the parasites. It's that easy, right? Money's technology. A, a Federal Reserve note has no value uh, because of Rothschild. It has value because of all the debt slaves all of the bond servants. So as soon as the bond servants say that, hey, we're gonna use something different, it's game over, right? It's just, it's a software issue. We upgrade the software, it's, it's, it's over for uh, Shylock. So that's easy, no violence, right? They'll put up a fight, of course, because they're the violent ones. But Yah's got all that, this is a story, this is a comedy, it ends in a happy ending. If we have the courage to walk into our highest, most noble potential, and take, be the head and not the tail, right? It says specifically in Deuteronomy 28 that we're supposed to lend money, be the head, be blessed, and be the bride that obeys Yah, Yah's commandments. Uh, you can pay the tithe to Yah 10% on your increase, only on your increase, and uh, you, you don't even need, um, you don't need anything you don't need money to pay it. You can pay your tithe with flocks and herds and oils and our, you know, the produce, uh, our labors. And that's in uh, Deuteronomy 14, like 23 through 25, roughly. So it's important that we know this, that there is a solution to this Babylonian captivity and then get people to share it. And I've been tr sharing it for 10 years basically on, on YouTube and, and Facebook and very few people, it's not growing, it's not getting traction because it has to happen face to face. It has to be. Now it's good for networking because I meet guys like Joseph Aquaviva, uh, Jim Callahan who's coming to Sarasota, um, uh, uh, Paul uh, who builds pools and Mike. So I share it with people face to face. So now we get our crew and we all go to these comedy clubs and then all of those guys learn how to do comedy and we set up our own comedy in churches because this whole thing is a comedy. This whole reality is a sitcom. It's a situation comedy. The situation is a whole bunch of money lenders uh, with a, a minuscule, tiny, tiny, minuscule, tiny, 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 tiny minority control the purse strings. And through that uh, control over the money, Mammon is able to uh, prostitute everybody else so that we just go do what, what they believe is good, their definition of good, which is Yah's definition of evil. Right, it's it's an inversion of truth. So to uh, to change all this is to simply share the good news with the caveat that you have to know what the good news is. Right? Comedy doesn't work unless you have the setup. Well, the setup that Yah has set up, He's made it so easy. He set it up where you have all of these atheists with no solutions. You have all these constitutionalists with no solutions because they believe in gold and silver money, which is monopolized by Rothschild, right? So you have all these idolaters that believe in all of these solutions other than Yah's solutions, where Yah just, watch this, reverse face. I'm nonviolent. However, I do love my children. I will protect my children. I, I do keep my promises and my bride will be righteous. She will obey. And because just like Yah wants his sons, the son of man, we, we human beings to be image bearers of him, he wants for our brides to be scriptural Proverbs 31 bribes. Bri bribes. <laughs> 
There's there's a lot. See, there's lots of comedy here. Lots of comedy. <laughs> there's a whole joke in there. There there is a whole bit about bribes and brides. I'm just I'll just leave that there. About in Babylon, if you go broke, you can't be married. Right? Right? I'm not advocating not working, by the way. Um, I'm just saying that that uh, this inversion of truth is uh, rampant. It's a system of prostitution. We wake up, we generally drive to work for strangers, hoping to, to do the job right, that you don't have to go back if you're in some kind of service, something, something. Um, hopefully... Uh, and it's, it's in order to make enough money, it's got to be productivity that you can't uh, develop long-term meaning relation because their people are so far away. And by the way, I'm going to work on that too. We're going to hand out flyers. And as we build this comedy juggernaut, uh, because everybody's got a story and everybody's got tragedies. And with time, all of those tragedies can be uh, turned into comedy. If you've got your crew of co-comedians... -co that will help you dust it up and find the the the, the ways to deliver the, the the funny punchlines. And by the way, you expand that into to music, and um, you know you got a church. These are these are guys that are willing to talk about the most foundational core realities that you're. If typically, if you bring this up in your regular circles, your friends will just scoff you off as being lazy, being a communist that you hate Trump or you hate love Trump and hate Bernie or vice versa or whatever, because this is so out of the box, meaning the biblical economic solution, the good news, that's why it's so funny is because you have the Tower of Babel, which we've all been consumed by, and you have this tiny mustard seed of biblical economics, which is going to destroy the whole thing, <laughs> like kryptonite to Superman, right? Uh, to their fake superheroes. The true biblical superheroes are going to uh, have a showdown and, and Yah will empower them to call down fire. And that's basically, um, you know, comedy is the two is the two witnesses of revelation. That's comedy where you have the whole world burning with steam and anger and loathing. And there's two witnesses who are like, bring it, bring it. Come on! Like, there's nothing that all of the tower, all of Pharaoh's chariots, all all of the all of Caesar's um, legions, all of Nebuchadnezzar's swords can do. Nothing that Uncle Sam or Shylock, none of them can do anything to it. The Vatican and and the Jesuits, whatever. Um, the, uh, I, I want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Once you make a list, like you got to be sure to include everybody. You're like, oh, I see. <laughs> the Christians, by the way, the corrupted Christians, the apostate church, the uh, all of them. So the whole thing can be taken down, all of it, all of it. And if you keep it light and fun and silly, in the same way that through the last hundred years of Hollywood, Hollywood has used art in the form of sitcoms and movies and theater and uh, music to get us to seduce ourselves, to, to use our the seven deadly sins to seduce us, to seduce the bride into being its most uh, Jezebel-ish sort of gal. She's a she's a slutty little Jezebel, this girl. And she needs to be reformed. She needs to go to reform school. <laughs> she's got to put on a long Amish dress, right? She needs to put a bonnet on. Jezebel needs to put on a bonnet. That's a whole comedy bit right there, right? So what happens is when you're in this uh, realm where you're, you're changing your perspective, and that's all it is, is a changing of perspective of using Yah's eyes to see this comedy on the ant farm. Yah's looking down at the ant farm and going, 
man, one day they're going to wake up to see how easily they can take their power back. I shouldn't say their own power, because the power is in, uh, is Yas, all glory to the Most High. Um, that's actually part of the confusion, is that we the people, thinking that we are the power, and we are not the power. That is the uh, Freemasonian mindset of, of uh, humanism. And humanism is just another uh, type of idolatry, right? Belief that hu the humans, meaning Adam and Eve, have the, the tree of the knowledge of wisdom, right? Good and evil and all that, right? So we want to have the tree of life. The tree of life is obey Yah, be an obedient bride, and be humble, and sacrifice all of your idolatry. Sacrifice your sacred cows. Give them up and just surrender to Yah. He'll empower you. He'll give you a new life in comedy, right? How awesome is that? Like, uh, you know, if you can make a living doing comedy for a local church, be a judge of 10, <clears throat> be a judge of 50, uh, be a judge of 100, so that they trust you so much that you can change your perspective that there's two, um, there's two parties which are quarreling. They have a controversy. So you take evidence from both sides, just like Solomon did. The wisest man, Solomon, where he judged. And like, there's comedy there. He's the wisest man, but he has like 500 concubines or whatever it was, right? I Like, I, that's got to be, com there's comedy all over the place. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, he was, he was asked to judge between two women over a baby, one being the actual mother and another being an imposter. One who claimed that she was the true mother, both claimed they were the true mother, but obviously one was only, so Solomon had to choose. And Solomon said, cut the baby in half, obviously. <laughs> so, so then the mother stood up that was the true mother and she said, no, 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 don't kill the child because the true mother doesn't, at the highest cost, above all things, the mother wants safety and not truth. She wants safety. <clears throat> so the baby lives. And we have to know that of women. Women want safety as the highest priority. And Yah requires truth as the highest priority. We're expendable because our our role is to tell Yah's story. And Yah's story is about how he's going to keep his promises and how he is going to win with a, a minuscule tiny minority because we're ruled with a minuscule tiny minority. Um, it's just we've got the wrong Jews. <laughs> We're using the wrong Jews. We have the wrong set of Jews right now. We need Nehemiah, David, and Jesus, and uh, uh, Paul, slash Saul, and the boys, right? So, Jeremiah. So, those are the Jews that we need. They track the genealogy through the father instead of the mother. There's comedy right there, right? It's just comedy everywhere. Comedy, this tragedy, this deception. Right? Comedy, like a good analogy is for comedy that I was thinking of because I'm trained. I grew up thinking the military mindset is that it's an, it's an ambush. Comedy is an ambush. Because you're trying to, like a pun. A pun has two meanings. So when people think of a word that they use in the most common way, but you use it in an alternative way. That was the ambush. You you tricked them because you said uh, stoned, right? If, so if you're talking about the Bible, you're a pastor, 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 talking about the Bible, reading Exodus and Deuteronomy, you know it's stoned is the punishment for a murder, right? Uh, public stoning, actually by the own family. The family has to uh, participate. Think about that level of justice, right? Um, but within the vernacular of the day in cannabis, stone is, is 
is cannabis. So, so the point is, it's an ambush. You're setting them up because you, you, the setup was, the, the situation was, it's storytelling. The plot, the plot is this, right? So most people look at the world and the, the, within the narrative, within the Overton window, which has been presented by most of the world, even the church. So the church has a narrative of the world, the apostate church, and you're supposed to just surrender to it. Surrender to the evil, Romans 13 nonsense, right? Um, the, uh, the constitutionalists, oh, we just got to get back to the constitution. But they were deceived. The constitution is we the people humanism, right? So you have all of these factions, which are all competing with their narratives, their setups, right? And all you've got, imagine they're all in the room. They're all in the room. But the truth is, right? Facts are stubborn things indeed. The, the leftists, the conservatives, the uh, whatever, the atheists, the commies, the, the Austrian economists, all of them are going to smash their head. They're going to stub their foot and there will be great, great, great gnashing of teeth. And when anybody, you know, stubs their toe, <laughs> if, again, comedy is tragedy plus time. But if they deserve it, you know, <laughs> if they deserve it, yeah, you know, it's not permanent when you stub your toe, but <laughs> yeah, is going to make them all turn and every knee shall bend and every lip shall confess that Yah is king because when his law comes down there's going to be great gnashing of teeth and I think this is hilarious and because it is it's totally hilarious so it's our job to prepare ye the way of the Lord and we can do that in comedy clubs inviting people to our comedy event at Passover and uh I want to have uh, in Tampa at, near my house. We're gonna we're gonna have a deal where I'm gonna I'll wear the banker costume and we're gonna have a fun run on Sunday the 19th. Right? I'm inviting everybody that you're Chase Wayne. Chase I should say uh, whip the banker. So everybody, you dress up as Jesus, running through the streets early because it gets hot in Florida in April 19th. And you got whips. Everybody's got whips in their hands. We'll have to find out a way to make cheap whips. And you're chasing the money lenders. So we'll have some some people that want to be the bad guys. Right, we'll do a we'll do maybe a 1K. I think we do 3K. Do both. Just so more of the neighborhood could see it because it's hilarious. And you invite everybody in for the Passover party that night, uh, which will be so that morning we have a wake and bake, we have a run, it's 4.20ish, uh, um, we get out on the boat, we have speakers, we have comedy, we have music, we have singing, um, right? We present a better future for humanity, I need my GPS, thanks for listening.